All right, so our next exciting question is, what is the balance of your everyday kind of path, right? So like James mentioned that typically in academia, you have this like split of what your duties are supposed to look like, but um, that never, I don't know, in my opinion, always doesn't seem to actually represent what you do. So uh, how about you tell us a little bit about how you balance things and how you prioritize things and, and what are you trying to choose between in any given day? So uh, James, take it away. Yeah, this, this is a hard one because um, it's like this is, I'm in my first year. And so it's not going to be like I imagine every other year. Um, in Hopefully addition, not. we've had everyone's <laughs> facing this pandemic and, um, and on top of it, I was also just came back to New Zealand and essentially like I was, at least the way that I saw it is I was just an unknown researcher in, in my home country because I, I, I wasn't really publishing or anything like that when I was doing my undergrad and my master's in New Zealand. So um, a, a lot of this year is spent trying to, is, is like a, a networking um, has been really important for me um, coming back and I've been trying to manage that in a way to make that effective I've tried to manage that through research too so um, getting in onto field trips to collect seed data for instance um, and then meeting researchers in the field at the same time in New Zealand to try to like combine those two things together um, and then as well as try I've been organizing uh, volcano tectonics meeting group um, during the pandemic and there are there are some advantages to people actually zooming more and, this, and one advantage was is uh, that I, we can s more easily set up meetings with between institutes um, and so I've there's been a great opportunity for me to run this uh, meeting group where people give presentations and we actually on especially on top of volcano and the goal is to write an overview paper from all of the um, all of these talks as well uh, so to motivate people to do the presentations and I get to learn so I've been a lot of time kind of a lot of time has been spent um, trying to establish myself in New Zealand um, I didn't have to teach in my first semester so it's you know, it hasn't been the proper balance um, so now that I've just started teaching about 50% of my time is probably spent every week on prep and teaching um, whereas before it was, it was a lot less. Um, and additionally, I, I'm not writing as many grants as I'd like because New Zealand, they need to be New Zealand focused. And again, I have to establish myself. So it's not necessarily the best answer. Um, I think and then, you know, I probably spend an hour or two a day writing emails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the un like, where is that? <laughs> it and that takes breakdown. up a lot of time. <laughs> um, so, so that kind of covers it, I guess, in some ways. Um, and and it probably through it, I've probably been dedicating about always dedicating a certain amount of time to research or just some progress on a paper every week, at least trying to put in a couple of hours, no matter what. Yeah. Um, I hope that kind of covers it. I, I yeah, I don't, I, it, it'll be very different than come next year. I, I think it's very different every year. I mean, that's at least how I'm seeing it at this point, but um, yeah. we'll find and out. I, I, I guess a lot of the stuff that's coming up now is trying to, we're trying to build course material that is virtual too um, and so we're now that the summer's coming and we have a break we'll be kicking that into gear more actually building virtual outcrops and because yeah. a lot of my job is field teaching um, and we need to be more adaptable um, as well as more innovative so um, we're starting to plan for the for this for, for developing these courses yeah cool thanks James so I'll, I'll leave it at that okay we can always come back later to other parts of it but um, how about my yeah, so I guess very similar to James, I just started in January. So, um, and this has been a very atypical year. Um, I went right into teaching. Um, so that was actually uh, quite exciting, but it did take up uh, definitely the first two quarters. The majority of the time I spent teaching because I was, um, they had an unexpected shuffle in faculty, so I got uh, a pretty hefty class that I wasn't expected to teach. And so there was a lot of prep and adjusting last minute. Um, but, you know, there was some refamiliarization with the instruments, you know, uh, seeing where does it stand in terms of data quality, what sort of maintenance needs to be done, and then um, quarantine hit. And then that translated to uh, most of my time was just spent adjusting the class that I was teaching 
to an online format. So for the course of those 11 weeks or so, it was just teaching and all the time and weekends. Um, but it's great. I think it taught me a lot. And like you said, it teaches us to be innovative, et cetera. So I think that's great moving forward. Um, the summer has been a bit of an opportunity to sort of catch up. Um, now that the lab is open again, very slowly in campus. So going back to campus and trying to, to catch up on other duties. So I, ideally, my time will probably be, be spent um, probably 30 to 40 percent on the instrument. 40 to ish percent teaching. And I just started supervising. Uh, there's an undergrad that uh, reached out. So I'm just starting the supervising steps. And I think the great thing about this position is I have a lot of the ability of the tenure track faculty. So um, like James, I'm trying to establish myself and I'm reaching out to people, research ideas and collaborations, and hopefully we'll be starting up um, grant writing, et cetera. Um, in the months to come. Um, but there's not the pressure of a tenure track faculty. So um, I don't have to sort of rush into it maybe as quickly, uh, but there's also not the pay. So, you know, it, it balances out, right? So it, things are a little bit and more at my own pace, um, but it involves a lot of the same duties, I think, as a, as a tenure track faculty would have. So there's the teaching, um, and the maintenance are the most, and then there will be a lot of writing and supervision as well as that goes, and that will probably change from year to year. Cool. It's cool that you get to mentor someone now. That's always I'm fun. very excited. They're yeah, lovely. That's awesome. All right, uh, Natalia? Yes, so I started at Los Andes in 2016, so this is my fourth year, and definitely things are pre-pandemic and currently is another story, but as a tenure track, um, so you were evaluated in three aspects in the university. So they see how you teach and, and they have a system to evaluate your teaching. It strongly depends on the opinions of the students, but um, there are many ways they, they do that. Um, also, they evaluate your management abilities. So um, you're forced to participate in lots of committees uh, to take decisions. So it's a, it's a small to medium university um, and they are really active in networking and um, trying to connect people and trying to get um, funding together. And at the same time, uh, you're forced to, ment to do the mentorship for undergrads. The, the, each each uh, six months you have um, nearly four to six guys to to do that mentorship so it's it's a lot of work to do mainly with students so because um you dedicate like most of the time basically to prepare the classes to teach but also a lot of time to talk to them and uh, answer questions and uh, sometimes my italian friends say that it looks more like a college than a university in that sense that we're very tied to the students and, and try to be, the human connection is very, very strong to them. So we guided them a lot and we also do some uh, advisement in terms of uh, even mental health issues or um, doubts during their career. Um, there are lots of, lots of different aspects. We're guided by un the university, luckily, because no one knows how to do that at the beginning. and. Um, then at the beginning, as you start, as you get involved in the tenure track, you have a three grant project um, for sure, but you have to write it. So at the beginning, the, six, the first four to six months, you write a project, then you send it through. And basically six months later, you get the money and then you have um, your first grant to work here. But basically it's like a startup so that you can link that money to other colleagues internationally basically the funding the research funding in colombia is is really complicated so you need friends and uh, you need lots of collaboration so um, that is why basically I, I keep working with shane but now he's in oakland and um 
with the Mexicans, Italians, and now Argentinians, because otherwise it's impossible to, to do projects. And the research time then, it's only during the um, two months where we don't have the academic uh, semester going on. So that is basically June, July, that's a time where we're only focused or basically mostly focused in, in research. And um, I get also December because that's the summertime in, in New Zealand. So I try to move with the hemispheres accordingly. And, um, but yeah, most of the time is, is teaching. However, um, in the pre-pandemic times, uh, we, the tenure track was, so you had six years, six years, yes, to complete the project and publish at least three papers and be a good teacher. That's the most important thing. If you pass that and give the associate position, then that's, that's all good to go and the, the pressure decreases in terms of um, the rate and the amount of papers you produce per year while you're teaching. And uh, that uh, points me to the, to the fact that we do field work, lab work, and so for a university that is mainly focused on engineering, experimental sites, or administration, it's not that common that uh, we need all that time to, to publish. But now with the pandemic, um, so all went online, uh, field work stopped as well. We st we've been in quarantine since March, basically one of the longest as well as in Chile. Um, so now is basically teaching and trying to, to finish the papers that were there and, and then looking for grants again. Cool, thank you, it's a good summary. All right, Caroline? So um, I, where to start, you all said very interesting things. I do a combination of, as you, uh, teaching, research, and um, service. For us, the third component is service, and it's service to the university um, and or service to the scientific community. So if you organize workshops, um, and whether it, they even prefer if you do it in Singapore and bring the community to Singapore and those kinds of things, that counts as the, as the service. When I joined um, NTU, I actually started by joining EOS and uh, the Asian School of the Environment was in the making. Actually, it didn't exist yet. It was a division of Earth Sciences that was part of the School of Physics and Mathematical Sciences. And a couple of years later, um, it uh, became the Asian School of the Environment. And when I joined, we, we, there wasn't even a first batch of undergraduates. So the, the graduates had started, there was a minor, but there was uh, no major in earth sciences um, yet. So everything was in the making, which made it very exciting, but also um, challenging because it's a lot of new course material to develop, a lot of uh, um, organization of the curriculum, thinking how you're going to do this. Also a lot of involvement to go and advertise for the program for students to you know, come and do earth sciences. It's the first um, and only um, earth science degree in Singapore. Um, there, there are uh, physical geography or other uh, themes like that, but, um, but no earth sciences, certainly not geosciences. So um, it was both very exciting and, and a lot of work. I initially got involved in um, probably a bit too much teaching at that stage, but that's what was needed and I kind of enjoy teaching, so, so I did it. I also, I guess the challenge was I got involved in a lot of many new classes. And so after uh, maybe three years, um, three or four years, I said, well, I'm tired of changing classes every year, every semester. <laughs> I'd like to be able to stay in the same topic for a while so that I can actually really improve the class year to year and not just restart everything from the, from the beginning. Even if you're given the class from someone else, sometimes you still have to adapt it to your way of teaching, to um, your way of delivering it. And that class maybe was taught for the first time, so it was also a new discovery, so you need to improve it, you need to make new developments. Um, building a rock collection for earth materials where they could look at actually a diversity of rocks under the microscopes, um, uh, building intro to geochem classes with fun projects and those kinds of things. So, so it did take up quite a bit of my time, 
And I think this is one thing that you kind of have to learn in your career is um, to be conscious of where you, where you put your time and, and make decisions on, on how you want to do it. And that can sometimes be very difficult because you obviously have a lot more pressure about, or at least that's how I was feeling it. I have this class coming up soon and I don't feel ready for it. So I can easily sink in a lot of time and completely leave the research out on the side just because I'm more nervous about finding myself in front of this group of students not being ready for it. Um, but ultimately, the way I'm evaluated at the end of the year and whether I'm going to get tenure or not is to a certain degree on the evaluations that the students are going to give. But they have no idea of how much time I've spent <laughs> on making this happen <laughs> and, um, and much more in the number of papers that come out. So I felt I often feel a bit torn apart between saying, well, maybe I should kind of cut it here. It won't be the best class ever but at least I'm not completely drowned under it and I still have some time to, uh, to work on other things. So that, that's, I think, is a very tricky thing, especially when you start um, and you're very excited about everything and you want to you know, contribute to your best. And, uh, and so that's, that, that took me some time to balance. I'm not sure I would say I found the perfect balance. I think I'm okay with what I have now, but it's something that you, I would say you have to be conscious of um, regularly and evaluate yourself regularly. Maybe to find days where, okay, these days I am not working on my teaching material. It's it's for research. It's for something else. Um, then um, in terms of research, I was very lucky to get um, a big grant, which is what they call the, Na the um, National Research Foundation Profession Professor Fellowship. And so it was a five-year um, grant for um, two and a half million Singapore dollars. And so that was a, a great opportunity, a great boost also for my tenure package um, that I haven't submitted yet. Um, it was also really nice because it meant I had funding for five years, so I didn't need to spend all that time writing grants. The challenge though was that it pushed me to really hire a big group of people. So I'm very happy with my big group of people. They're all awesome, they're all working really well. But it's a, it's a different job to be managing this group of people. So I now have 10 people on my team that I work with. Um, and that's postdocs, PhD students. Um, we have research assistants and research associates um, in our uh, field as well. And on top of that, I get students for final year projects, for summer internships, for we have all of these different kinds of internships. So when you have a big group that's running, you can um, have the help of postdocs or even PhD students to help mon uh, mentor the students, but it's still up to you to make sure that, that the, the um, purpose of the internship is, is uh, followed and it actually goes somewhere. That the student actually delivers something that makes sense, um, that the progress is um, done at the right time. And so um, really I moved from a researcher where I was doing my science to a manager and that happened in like a year <laughs> and so that was that was very interesting um, but also very challenging so I spent a lot of time hiring don't underestimate the time it takes to hire someone because um, between advertising um, answering all of the questions you get about the advertisements interviewing candidates and then managing all of the human resource side for the people to actually be able to come to Singapore because there's few Singaporeans that um, we hire because there's no earth science background, so there's not so many people we can hire for that. Um, and you want to spend um, proper time evalu uh, evaluating the people you're taking in. So I think that that took a lot of my time was to just put together this team and um, and uh, so, so build the labs also. That was the first um, couple of years. Building the labs took a lot of my time. Purchase, um, and uh, so I think we don't. We try not to speak about the admin side too much because it's not the side we want to spend time on, but it can quickly get a big time sink. And so again, that's something you have to decide to manage. Um, talk about with others. 
um, to see how they manage it, um, what tricks they know that can help to speed things up, and how to make things happen. Um, so I would say um, that now I, I, particularly during the summer breaks, I'm able to get myself some time for my own research, my own activities. During the semesters, between teaching, student mentoring, and managing the lab, there's much less time for my own research. Maybe I need to organize my schedule even a bit better, but uh, I'm working on it. Um, and um, admin, I don't, every country is different. Um, Singapore is, is very admin heavy, in my opinion. I don't know how it is elsewhere, so it's hard to compare. Um, teaching is certainly fun, but it can be a time sink. And student mentoring is also very fun. And it depends on the students. With undergraduates, you don't always totally choose. But, uh, but we've had some fun things come out. And so there are times in the semester where there's really little time for, teach, for, for research, and then there's other times in the organized world where you can make more. So I'd say it's not linear. And then certainly with the pandemic, things have changed. Um, although I've been really lucky because most of my field work was complete before the pandemic hit. So we didn't have any major, too, not too many, I, I wouldn't say none, but I wouldn't say too many uh, major hindrances. And now for the teaching, I am like all of you moving to online and so discovering how to do this, what are the tools, how it works, <laughs> and uh, how we can make it happen. Again, I'm lucky because this semester was a, it's a large student class. I have 250 students. So anyway, it, it's not too much of a difference between standing in front of a, a lecture theater and, or standing in front of a screen. Um, but when I'm teaching earth materials, if I can't go back into the classroom, um, that's going to be a, an interesting experience. And so that I'll keep that for later. <laughs> um, what else is there? I think I've covered the different activities. Oh, maybe one thing that I think would be important to share is that um, we've tried to set up with more or less um, success a, a mentoring scheme uh, in the Asian School of the Environment. So where um, people with tenure um, are the official mentors of people that don't have tenure yet amongst the faculty. And um, it's a go-to person who you can talk about your grant writing strategies, uh, where you should be spending, what you should be spending more time on or not, um, what the school will be evaluating in your, in, in your package and what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, um, and tips from what they've been through before. Um, I think that's something that's, that's pretty useful in, in um, becoming more successful. And uh, I know that I've been trying to use it. And um, also, I think for the grant writing side, I didn't need to write too many grants and I was generally quite successful. Part of it is luck. And I think um, another part is trying to get as much informed as possible about what the different grant types are. What do they fund? What do they not fund? What do they like to see? What they don't like to see? Um, how you put your grant together. And so I do try to spend a lot of time talking with people in the department um, to know like what they've applied for. Um, when I'm interested in doing something, have if they could share the proposal with me, if they can tell me what their experience was. Um, because I think all of the time you spend doing that, you actually save on the proposal writing and you're less blind in uh, putting it together. Same for teaching. I also try when I discover new tools or when I go, when I start a new class, uh, I try to go to people who've had big classes like that before. How did it work? What were your challenges? If I do this kind of assignments, you know, what, what are going to be the big time sinks? Um, and I try to get a lot of advice as much as I can from people in the department. And people have been very kind sharing their materials, their time, um, their advice. And I think it's something that works. And I try to give it back to now with younger faculty that have joined the department. <laughs>